in the actual uh, paper, they really kind of gloss over that. And they focus more on that, like, well, these people had high ApoB and they didn't seem to have more plaque because of ApoB. But when you actually look at the actual um, graphs, the non-calcified plaque increased in almost every person in the study and it increased like 18 millimeters um, cubed of plaque in that time frame, which would be more than what a kind of general healthy population would be. So it's still kind of early, let's say. It's observational. It's kind of, you know, uh, hypothesis generating. Doesn't prove that this diet is healthy. It doesn't prove that this diet is going to cause you to have a heart attack next year. But it does mean that you have to look a little bit deeper. So that's why I always kind of go back to what we talked about earlier. It's like, it's the root cause. Like, what's going on with the glycocalyx and the endothelium? If that layer is healthy, maybe you can get away with having these LDL cholesterols of 500 for years. But the second you see that the glycocalyx is damaged and the endothelial dysfunction is happening and your arteries are stiff and your nitric oxide is low, that person's the time bomb ready to go off in a few years. And you don't want to reduce the risk of a heart attack in one year. You want to reduce the heart attack risk for the next 30, 40 years. Hmm. You know, you had said something earlier that there's a 20% increase in plaque year over year. The calcium that, score The itself. calcium score. Um, was that the same as those in this uh, keto CTA trial? It's kind of apples and oranges because mm. most people did not have calcified plaque at the beginning. Because they're too... They're young. Young. 